let's take a look at how to handle or read user input in the command line in Rust. And the most basic way to do that is utilizing part of Rust's STD. And no, I'm not talking about a venereal disease. Using part of Rust's standard library, specifically IO. So the IO library just stands for input output, actually. Actually, once we use or utilize this library in our code, we'll have access to some things that allow us to read in input from the terminal, from a user, let's say a user wants to type something in, they can do so. And then we could do whatever we want with the user's input. So for this example, just to show you guys how to do something like that, we'll just make a new Rust project and we can call this thing, we'll call this project number guess or whatever you wanna call it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new Rust project using Cargo. If you don't know what Cargo is, then you can go ahead and check out one of my previous Rust videos somewhere right here. There should be a link for it. But if you do know what Cargo is, then you already know what's next. I can just type Cargo new and we'll call this number guess. So that should have created our new project titled number guess. All right, so now I'm gonna whip out my handy dandy Visual Studios code IDE. But it's not an IDE, no. Whatever, and if you are familiar with Cargo already, then you probably already know the files that are gonna be generated with it. We got this main.rs file and it has our hello world already built for us. Wow, thank you Rust, so kind of them to do so. All right, so now what I'll do is just open up my terminal since it's already open. If you want, you can go ahead and open up a new terminal inside Visual Studios code. And just to make sure, just to be super safe guys, let's run this current new project, Cargo run, boom. There we go, we got our hello world. So we know this thing runs, now we can go to the next step. Let me put that terminal away for now and let's just focus on this main Rust file with the main Rust function. Now, if you guys remember, I told you all that in order to read or use or handle user input from the terminal, we have to utilize something from the Rust STD, something from the Rust venereal disease. And what in particular are we gonna utilize from the Rust STD. In this case, we just wanna have access to the IO library, which just stands for input output. And how do we get access to that in our code? How do we get access to that into this specific file? Much like many other programming languages, you're gonna to need to go ahead and use a use statement here at the top. So I'm gonna type use space STD colon colon IO. And of course, gotta have the semicolon. All right, so focusing back on the main function itself, we got this little hello world print line in here. Let's take this out and let's just say, hello, welcome to our number guessing game, exclamation mark, wow. VS Code Copilot, thanks for typing that for me. And then I'm gonna say, please enter a number to guess. That's what we have so far. Two print statements that should be being printed onto the terminal letting the user know, oh, this is a guessing game. Please guess a number, enter, enter that number as well, why don't you? Next, what we need to do is we need to create a variable to store the number from the user input in. And if you don't know anything else about Rust so far and you've just been following my Rust tutorial videos, then you probably don't know what the let keyword or the mut keyword is. Nonetheless, we're gonna use that in order to create said variable. In Rust, we can just type let. Next keyword here I'm gonna use is mutt. Don't worry about that for right now. And then I just wanna call this variable, and call it guess, since apparently VS Code Copilot wants to call it guess for me. Set it equal to capital S-T-R-I-N-G, colon, colon, new, open, close, params, and boom. Now we got a variable named guess that we're gonna use in order to store the user's input, which is gonna be a guess, into. So much like every other programming language, everything on the right hand side of the equal sign is going to be bound to this guess word. And we're going to have access to whatever that data that is being stored somewhere via this guess variable name. It's starting to sound familiar, right? So in actuality, all you guys need to know for now is that the let keyword just allows us to create a variable. And I guess we can just talk about mutt real quick. So in Rust, fellas and uh, sirs and zers, MUT allows us to make our variables mutable. And why do we need to do that in Rust? 
The reason we need to do that in Rust is because in Rust, variables are all going to be immutable by default, which that just means that once we give a variable some kind of value, it, it can't change unless when you're declaring that variable, you give it the mut or really mute keyword. And why are we doing that in particular right here? Honestly, that doesn't really need to be explained in the scope of this video, but to just give you guys a brief, a brief explanation, we want it to be a string and we're setting it equal to capital string colon colon new. And what is this capital string colon colon new doing for us? This puppy right here, this is a function that returns a new instance of a string. This string in particular actually in Rust from the standard library, it's quote unquote growable. At least that's what the documentation from Rust calls it growable. It's UTF-8 encoded bit of text, yada, yada, yada. And the reason that we need to have the mute keyword is because the way that it is now, basically, it's just, hey, we're setting it equal to a new instance of a string. And in this case, that's going to contain absolutely nothing. But to summarize in whole, let mute or mut, whatever you want to call it, guess equals string new. This whole line, we basically created a mutable variable and it's bound to a new empty instance of a string. Now let's get to receiving the user input. So if you guys remember, we included this use std colon colon io up here on line one. This is the input output functionality from the Rust STD, the Rust standard library, the Rust venereal disease. And now from the same IO library, we want to use something called STDIN. So let's type IO colon colon STDIN open close params, kind of like you're calling a function. Or in this case, we would be calling the STDIN function from the IO module. This part in particular is what's going to allow us to handle user input. Next, on a new line, I'm just going to tab over one and type dot read underscore line, open close, ampersands, mute, space, guess. So if this is looking like another function called to you, that's because it kind of is. This is the read line function on the standard input handle, and this is going to get the input from the user when they type it into the terminal. Now, notice how inside of here, we're passing it that variable name guess that we created up here on line seven. That's obviously to tell it where we want to store this input from the user. And the whole job of readline is basically just take whatever the user types into standard input and then like append it to a string. In this case, our string is guess, but it needs to do that or it wants to do that without overwriting its contents. And the string's arguments need to be mutable. That's because if it wasn't mutable, then the method itself, readline, wouldn't even be able to change the string's content. This ampersands, this is a reference. And if you have any kind of experience with like C or C++, if you use pointers, you might be familiar with like seeing something like this, not saying that that is exactly what it is, but you get my drift. But this reference thing right here, this ampersands kind of also goes out of the scope of this video, but just to give something to you guys that you can kind of understand this reference, this kind of gives you a way to let different parts of your code access one piece of data without needing to copy that data into memory over and over again. It's kind of a complex feature. And it's kind of like one of the big advantages of Rust. Oh no, I have to do things manually. My heck in JavaScript, ah. But like I said, you don't need to know the rest of the details about that right now to finish this program that we're writing. But what you should know is that like variables, references themselves are also immutable by default. That's why we need to write that ampersand mute or mut guess rather than just ampersand guess to make it mutable. Now let's get to the next step. And if you haven't noticed, we don't have a semicolon here at this line because we're technically not done with it yet. So what I'm about to do next, just keep in mind, it's still part of the same singular logical line of code, but on a new line to make sure it looks clean, I'm going to make another call using the dot operator. So dot expect failed to read line. Man, I can't even spell, so I may as well just let VS Code Copilot spell for me. And yeah, you could have written this out all on one line if you really wanted to, but are you really elite super coder if you do all that and you don't make it readable? Come on. And now we can just end this line. All right, and I suppose just to make sure that we actually have grabbed the user's input when they type it in into said guest variable specified here in the read line function call. Let's just go ahead and print out something that says, hey, you guessed and then pass it the guest variable so we can see 
what we have stored inside of the guest variable. Is it actually what the user typed? Let's see. All right, so here, line 13, another print line function call. And inside of the string, I just typed you guessed colon space open close curly braces. What we're doing here, my friends, is we're using placeholders. All right, let's plop open yield terminal out again and let's just run this puppy. And we will say cargo run. And as you guys can see, hello, welcome to our number guessing game. Please enter a number to guess. I'm gonna say 10. And then it says you guessed 10. Boom. All right, so we know that that works the way that it's supposed to. All right. But really quick, before we go any further, something that you might have noticed, we're telling the user to enter in a number, right? But we're using a string. But if I want to actually handle this number as if it's a number for numeric type of logic, if we're going to compare our user's guest number to whatever kind of number we're choosing to be our quote unquote secret number, we got to do something about that. So what are we going to do about that after lines nine through 12 right here, where we're taking in our users guest in the command line in the terminal. I'm going to make a new variable using the let keyword. So let, and I'm going to call this guy guess as well. Now, don't freak out. Don't freak out. It's not, it's not heck in JavaScript. Okay. And let me just type the rest of this and then I can explain it to you guys. So colon space U 32 equals guess dot trim. I'll just let copilot type, but go ahead. Dot trim dot parse dot expect. Please type a number. Okay. And what the hell are we doing on line 13? So we're creating a variable named guess again, but I know you think the program already has a variable named guess that we created on line seven, right? Well, it does. You're right. But Rust via what is called shadow or shadowing with this new variable, we're going to be able to quote unquote shadow, which really we're just kind of reusing the guest variable name. So just the guest name rather than like making us create two separate variables. So for example, if I were to say guess underscore string and then guess, because what we need to do here is we need to change this from a string into a number. Something that you could probably compare this to in the past is like casting one variable to another. Pretty common thing. We're just gonna be converting our value of the user's input from one type, type string, to a number. So on the right hand side of the equal sign, that's what this new guess is being assigned to. And we're using guess.trim.parse. And the guess right here, it is an actual reference to this guess right here. The trim method right here, I mean, that's just gonna do what trim would normally do in other programming languages. It's just gonna eliminate any kind of white space. And that's because if we actually want this string to become a U32 integer type, then it can't have any white space. It's not gonna work, it'll probably error out. And then parse when used on a string, it's just going to convert that string to another type. And in this case, we're just going to be converting it to a number, this U32. And why can't we, why can't we just be like JavaScript and type heck and number, bro? Even though in JavaScript, you wouldn't even be saying the word number. Well, actually, that's because that's actually, that is because with Rust, we need to tell it the exact number type we want to be using. Hence the U32. 32. And then the colon after guess, that just lets Rust know that we're going to annotate the variables type. And you might have already guessed it, but the U32 is indeed a 32-bit integer, unsigned 32-bit integer. All right, so let us take back our terminal or put a terminal back here. And let me just build this thing again real quick because I think I've done diddly tinkered with this a little bit too much. Okay, I think the building's fine. So now I'm going to do cargo run, please enter a number to guess, and I'll just type in whatever, 10, you guessed 10. All right, no problems so far. All right, and so to finish this puppy off, let's just use some boomer if statement logic. So I'll just say if guess equals equals, because two equals is an assessment, not an assignment, right? Equals equals 42, we'll say that you guessed the right number else we're going to tell them that they guessed the wrong number. So let's bring the terminal back in and let's just, let me build this thing again. I know I'm OCD about it. Cargo build. Now I'm going to do a cargo run and there you go. Please enter a number to guess and I'll say 42. You guessed 42. You guessed the right number. Wow. Clippity clappity. Bada boom, bada bing. Like, comment, subscribe. If you got something out of this, stay tuned for some more Rust tutorials. That is it. I'm out. See ya.